And of course, good evening. It's April 9th, 2024, and we're in our next collection, Discussions Outside the Class series. It's another series from Tim Mackey. It's called Eat This Book. On the DustyFeet.com, in the Outside the Class section, we have the Eat This Book source video section set up for review. Because the intent of Outside the Class, of course, is for you to listen to the in-class lecture first. Those will be found in the source video playlist. We try to keep these to around 15 to 20 minutes or so. Easy to catch and easier to catch up on. So we're going to continue our Eat This Book series with Israel's Exile, Hitting Bottom. And that's our topic tonight on Outside the Class on the Dusty Feet. And before we forget, if you find these kinds of podcasts useful, then you click that subscribe button. The reminders, they just help you. But also, if you think these might be useful to others, then when you click that like button, because that is the way that YouTube chooses to share these to more people, if they wish. Eat this book, Israel's Exile, Hitting Bottom. This is only part one. So I really hope that you listen to that video in the source video playlist because it really sets us up for this discussion. Because if you have not listened to it, then, then the context might actually sound a little strange. But um, let's see where we go from here. So Tim starts off with a, with a personal story. I love how Tim does that often. It's, it's common in the way he teaches. He'll engage us with a personal story of some kind of his. And I love how this personal story, how it ties into where we're going to with 2 Kings chapter 17 and 25. And of course, you know, we're going to get even deeper into it. So Tim opens up uh, a whole box of questions as we, uh, we explore the story and in the context of the second scroll of Kings, right? Because Tim brings up certain things during this discussion that I think we're going to find very engaging. But let's start at the beginning, because this is going to be an uncomfortable story. And I can also promise you in these next episodes that we talk, it's going to be very uncomfortable because it's going to push us to think about things differently. I think it's going to push us to see where they relate, not only when looking back on a picture, like we tend to do here on the Dusty Feet, because we also put on the sandals of the various characters within the stories. We feel for them because maybe they might be us. I think we often I think we often don't want to be in the sandals of one side. We realize afterwards, more often than not, that we at times find ourselves in the very sandals that we don't want to be in in the story. And I think that's going to be important as we venture forward. So let's address talking about his friend. So in this story, he's talking about a friend of his, Mike. And if you've heard this story before, because I've actually heard this story in another video series, and he has where he talks about Mike. But he only mentions the first part of the story. Because Tim, in that other series, he mentions up to the part that Mike, in the meeting at Wendy's, started Tim on his turnaround to a correct course. He doesn't mention in that other series what Paul Harvey might coin as the rest of the story. Yet to be fair, in that other series, Tim is focusing on the tremendous impact that Mike has had on his life up to that point. Yet, as we know, just like in our lives, the story goes on. You know, my point is that in real life, unlike movies or books, these are real people. There was, or is, a real rest of the story in each and every life. And except for the precious few that we do, we really don't know many of them at all. I'll be honest. I can be a bit hypocritical here in a sense. I, I tend to pick on those that take a, a movie or book character and break down their lives and the possible life experiences before and after the movie or book. Fictitious people. But it's not my point. My point is that sometimes we think that folks in these stories, that they're fictional as well. Not because we don't believe the story. It's, it's because, 
because we're so detached from the story. These folks, either as the story that someone shares or that we read about in the Bible, actually did have a life before and after the event they're going to read about, or the ones we're told about. And that can be good, and that can be not so good. It's not for us to judge, just to realize, to acknowledge, and maybe, maybe even sympathize where we can. So Tim tells a story about his life and where it's going. And at a relatively young age, his early teens, he starts on a bit of a downward spiral, kind of touch and go with Jesus. He's a young teenager at this point, and there's no real relationship with God. He's being involved in skate park and in the skateboard scene. Mike, he sees Tim, and he noticed that Tim is getting with the wrong crowd, going the wrong direction. And Mike knows who this wrong crowd is. And he says, hey, you don't want to go down that path. You did, That is somewhere you do not want to go. But Mike, he's not badgering, but he is presenting a choice to Tim. And the way Tim told the story in the other series, it's great because he basically shares the same thing. And Tim comes around and decides he's going to Take it more seriously. Tim realizes that he needs to change. You know, that was a, a major turnaround point for Tim in his life. And Tim, in the story, is honoring and respecting Mike with his involvement at this moment in this place. But with Mike, there is a rest of the story. Mike has more to his story, and Tim shares a sobering story falling to the very warning that he'd given to Tim. The very cautionary tale that Mike so it was so important to share with this very special lad, of course, because he does, we get the blessing of Tim Mackey so many years later. But that tale, it had crept into Mike's life in a devastating way. And what kind of at home here and it connected with me was the slow degradation, the story we hear. The story, you know, we hear it very quickly from Tim. It's very brief, very concise story, little snippets and pieces. But it really took years, years of time to start the drift. And that point of him coming to the very warning that he gives Tim, that Mike ends up going down a path that drives him to a life that basically destroys himself, his family, and his friends, because his life then becomes anything but the guy that Tim needed in his life at that time. An engaging part in the story was, as times we see ourselves, we tend to always see ourselves as the turnaround point guy. We want to put our feet in Tim's sandals, be the turnaround guy. But we don't, at times, want to put on the sandals of Mike. And I think it's an important part for us, maybe, to put Mike's sandals on and to say, where are the points in our lives where we get those moments where we've been the voice of reason for somebody else? Yeah. But then we get to that point, that very thing that we were being the voice of reason for, because now it's now part of my life. That is a sobering thought. Because the drift from God, occasionally, I'll be honest, it's true, there, there could be an event that will happen and it will, it will cause you to turn your back on God. You know, it, it's an interesting thought for me because I have a couple of different ideas about it. Because I think about uh, when that happens, are we turning our back on God? Or are we turning our back because we have an expectation of God? You know, sometimes that, uh, that personal expectation that we have inside, right? Because it ends up coming from something that we were taught or we were told. And that's where it drives us. That that's where it takes us. So this is going to have context as we move further on in this discussion. So... I kind of want to address it now, and the understanding of, of 
that there's a point where sometimes we think something should or should not happen. And then when it does or doesn't happen, that's when that disillusion thought, right? That thing that creeps in, that's what's going to cause us to walk away, the disillusionment. You know, we have these points in our lives where, where things will happen. And somebody's going to say, hey, when Jesus comes into your life and your life's going to be better, right? Things are going to be better. You're going to be, I don't know, fill in the blank. Then, then when that something happens that isn't what fits the idea, that's what causes us to ask, is this better? That's when we get shook. That's when we get to the point of a thought of whether that was, and then that didn't happen. Because I don't know whether Mike's story relates to that or not. I don't have a clue. I just know that sometimes in our lives, and often we have these expectations of what we think God is involved with. And when that expectation doesn't happen, that shakes our foundation. That those those kind of events, those are those quick turn events where we have the expectation and it doesn't happen. But I also find, actually more often than not, that we just walk away. It's a, it's a drift away. It's slowly. We drift. Yeah, I'll agree we have an expectation, say, of church, then it doesn't happen. So we, we start to become disconnected. We, we drift away from friends. We then build up other expectations. And then when they're not met, that gives us just cause to, uh, to move along, to shun relationships. And I know that this is going to be an interesting tie into Israel's exile because it was the broken and shunned relationships and the other side of the expectation coin from God's promises. Those are going to have the impact on this story. And I'll also say our lives. So next week, we're going to continue on this topic along with prophets, warnings, and God's promises the other side of the coin, and then why we're here, and maybe why we need this cautionary tale. So thanks for being with us tonight on another edition of Outside the Class with Israel's exile hitting bottom on the dusty feet. Mm-hmm.